alaikum and welcome to Making a House a Home on Imam Hussain TV with myself, Raghad Baqir, and our expert life coach and NLP practitioner, Fahima Muhammad, who today will be addressing the issue of culture versus religion. Assalamu alaikum, Fahima. Alaikum salam. I'm really glad you've brought this uh, up for discussion because a lot of us face this issue every day. Yes, it is. Uh, culture <coughs> and religion, what's, what are we meant to follow? Uh, yes, um, there is a clash between the two issues and how to live and to what extent does one follow. And it is a general issue that it's becoming more and more problematic actually. That's why in the show it's really important to bring it up because we want to make the house a home. Mm -hmm. We want to make it where there is clear, concise you know, understanding and meaning between the two. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that uh, we have to eradicate one or the other. Um, we have to define each other, you know, the religion, the culture, and understand what does that represent, what does that mean, who are we, you know, what does that say for us, how do we sort of like, you know, see ourselves, and it's really about, um, in today, I know, reading up about psychologists who have studied religion and culture generally, and they came up asking students how do they identify themselves, and usually they will call out their ethnicity, you know, ethnicity, which is like, I'm Chinese, I'm Latino, I'm, you know, sort of like, which country they come from. Yeah. And they were told, um, so what is it that, you know, defines, you know, their culture, and that is to do with, um, it sh they w their answers were basically, um, it tells us how to live, our culture, you know, tells us what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. and it gives us our beliefs, but not as in religious beliefs, but actually, you know, what they feel is, mm -hmm. you know, the way to follow, the way to live. The way to live. Mm -hmm. So it's like their habits with regards to their language, their dress, and it's normally, obviously, we know culture is because it's, you know, a group of people living in a particular area, place, country, mm -hmm. which is all fine. You know, we need to have that identity. You know, we, you know, we are sometimes very patriotic about where mm -hmm. we come from. It gives us some sort of like, you know, a sense of belonging and being mm -hmm. and that's all well mm -hmm. the thing is um, in Islam we have to know how to function in a way that you know the cultures there our Prophet peace be upon him and family did recognize culture did introduce it into some of the religious um, regulations mm -hmm. uh, and rulings as part of religion mm -hmm. but eradicated a lot of culture because it actually did bring a lot of you know contradictions as to how we should live in regards to women, children, husband, wife, you know, a lot of rules that is followed by culture is not necessarily to our benefit. Mm -hmm. But as we see in certain cultures, it's still carried forward and it's the most important thing that people feel that they need yeah. to live by. It's almost as important as, as yes. religion itself. And they come from other countries to the Western world, for example, and they will bring in their culture more than the religion. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have problems with integration, even within the Muslim communities. Mm -hmm. We find that there's so many of us will have different centers, different communities calling ourselves, you know, we're from this part, we're from that part. And Islam really doesn't really promote that. You know, if you really follow religion and understand what it means, it actually eradicates a lot of that and it actually brings multiculturalism a lot more. So if we look at it in that aspect, then, you know, we should, you know, enjoy, we should celebrate our culture. But to what extent do we actually live by it? We should segregate ourselves. Yeah, even in Just marriage. Of, a certain culture. of course, a different mm. caste, different race, different background, different skin color even. You know, it brings about so much of the segregation that is, you know, imposed in our homes, in societies, and then our religion totally doesn't accept any of that. Yeah. So actually it's actually our religion is quite modern and moving forward, whereas culture is actually holding you back. Yes. Because culture just stays where it is. It stays it? where it is. It doesn't evolve. Mm. And also in religion, there are reasons why there are certain rulings, whereas culture, it's just the way it's been because our ancestors and generations has actually followed through in that suit. So they feel they have to without real reason and meaning. It's what's comfortable. It's what's comfortable. Yes. It's a mediocre life and it's mm. actually got no real, you know, purpose. Whereas religion, especially with us following what we do and what we know, if we were to follow it properly with real understanding and meaning, then you will find that th actually our homes can be a lot more simpler. Mm. Our decisions can be made a lot more easier. Mm. And things are black and white to a certain extent, but if you understand religion properly, it's not just about it, you know, following it black and white as well, because there's certain rulings. It also depends on how it affects the other person. So even if you have to listen to your husband, even if you have to do certain things, the wife's, you know, 
feelings are taken into consideration. Your parents, your, you know, background or whatever it may be, you know, might not consider that. Mm -hmm. So I think religion is something that we need to focus on more than we do on culture. But doesn't mean you have to take that away completely, as mm -hmm. long as it doesn't overlap and clashes with what Islam says. So that's the most important thing, I think. And obviously, you know, our religion is something where we have to understand the history of it, that a lot of the customs and traditional cultural sort of habits were eradicated because it wasn't actually, you know, there for our benefit. Yeah. So unless you don't have clear understanding and knowledge of your religion, mm. you're not going to think of it as something that you can actually live by. And so yeah. people just follow the culture instead. I think that's what gives a, a reason for a lot of people in the West to attack Islam. Yes. Because a lot of the cultural things that come within it, for example, the arranged marriages mm -hmm. where the, the man and the woman haven't met before, or the fact that some cultures treat the woman um, at a lesser grade yes. or as less than double than standards, man, yes. double standards. Mm -hmm. whereas actually in, in Islam it's the woman like has a haq uh, on her husband of course. If, you know even even if she's nursing her child you know things like so many things rights like that. there are so many rights yeah. that has uh, that no one knows about because culture has overridden that absolutely <coughs> and that's why our homes are really suffering <coughs> in many yeah. cultures today that are existing even in this western world that we're in you know there are so many problems in marriages, in your homes, with siblings, with spouses, with relatives, yeah. because it's not religion mm. that they're following. No, it's the culture. It's the culture. Mm. So this is really important. And if you don't know your religion, seek the advice. Go to the marja. Go to, you know, whatever's there. And people are like, oh, well, you know, we don't really want to follow any marja. But you know what? It's like a doctor. Yeah. You know, they study, they're scholars. You've got to give them the respect. And they take it upon their heads and their, it's responsibility on them for what they have studied. So you can follow and it's taken away from you to a certain extent yes, as well. you don't have to do the research yes. yourself. It's already been done for yes, you. Yes, so what is the problem yeah. with that? You don't have yeah. to have all of it. So I don't understand even the question about that. But then even following a certain manager, it becomes like a thing where those people that are following certain suit, they also like isolate themselves. Yeah, they won't listen to any other marriage, but yeah. then they can think that actually other marriage have also done research. And Absolutely. What and we come to. The thing so. is in life, it's going to be tough where you're not going to be able to like everything that you hear and see. But just like going to a doctor, you're going to take the medicine and you're going to take and have, go through surgery that is going to be painful and it's going to take time to heal. It's the same thing with religion. Mm. So don't just think that one or two things you don't like and approve of, then you've got to forget it all and just follow the way you want. Mm. And you know what? It's fine if you want to choose to do that. But look at the consequences of it. Look at the homes today that are broken. Look at how mm. people are living with even everything that they think they have. And they're still so unfulfilled and unhappy. And this is the homes that we have today where, you know, technology is at its, its highest. You know, money is available. We have so much available to us generally. We're not in an underdeveloped or developing world. Mm. And we still have so much issues. And it's all because the foundation of the home and, you know, that unites us, that creates us, that builds us, that gives us a support system. Mm. It's just broken. Yeah. Yeah. If you just follow the simple uh, rulings of the religion, I think it would be, it would be much easier to just yes. make it flow. And, you know, um, the new generation with our children as well, you know, it's not being presented to them properly. Mm -hmm. So they're also following it differently. You know, cultures taking over and they don't know which way to follow. And they just think it's mm -hmm. easier to be in a Western world and just do what they need to do and just bring back what, you know, rituals they had from back home. And it's just such a mix up. But you see, with religion, there is no differences. You can bring anyone. They say in Islam, it's like, you know, be kind and, and you know, uh, good to your neighbors. It doesn't say which neighbor. It could be from any culture, any caste, any whatever. Mm -hmm. So take that forward in your way of thinking and believing. So you can actually be a better person when you follow more towards your religion than you would do with culture. Because there's no segregation. There's no sort of like um, differences and boundaries. Exactly. There's no limitations in that way between people. And this mm. is what we need in society today, because we're all referring to ourselves with regards to the country that we come from, which is fine, it's part of our identity, but at the same time, it's actually, you know, secluding us. It's actually putting us in boxes and labeling ourselves. And we say that, yes, we're so forward thinking and we're integrating and we're doing this, that and the other. But you ask anyone, you know, they'll be friends with you, but to, you know, invite you into their homes to, for marriage purposes, it's which caste, which religion, uh, which, sorry, which, um, 
you know, country you come from and which city, which even, city even, you know, all of these things. Yeah. And, and then there's women that are sitting there over their 30s just not getting married because of that reason. Mm. You know, is that nice? Is it religious? It is, is religion. Right it's it's right not way? nice. Yeah. No, of course. And they're just destroying their own homes that mm. way and the future. So, you know, be really careful how you follow your culture mm. and to what extent you can enjoy it. Like I said, you can celebrate it. But seriously, when it comes to real decision making, you need to really understand your religion more. Yeah. We need to identify ourselves as Muslims yes. rather than as a certain culture or background. Or Absolutely. And I think that's what needs to be understood is, you know, where is the difference between religion and culture and how, you know, it contradicts everything sometimes in the way in which we live. And we need to be now thinking forward. We need to start waking up. Mm. and just not live mediocre lives because we're lazy because this is what our parents told us we think it's real mm. we think it's right and we just follow suit yeah. and then we just pick you know whatever we decide that is for our benefit but you know at the end of the day it's it's a whole picture mm. and it filters into what happens in your life afterwards yeah so in terms of culture versus religion um, now that we're in the, the times of Muharram and Safar um, a lot of people spend this, uh, this two months just wearing black or living a certain way of life. Some people even don't watch TV for the two months. Mm -hmm. um, is that more of a cultural thing or is it more of a religious thing? What, what's your thoughts on that? Well, religion does, like I said, overlap with culture. Mm -hmm. But like I said, there's meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. There's reasons behind it. And it's who we're following. Mm -hmm. So we're not following just a generation without meaning. We're following something which gives us sort of respect and understanding as to why we are, you know, we are mourning in this month. So it's, it's, it's said to be wearing these sort of colors and to perform certain rituals. Obviously, there are certain extents where people take it to another level in which they will follow. And that is cultural too. You can keep it very simple or you can go beyond. So I can understand that there is, a, you know, there's an understanding there that, you know, religion can be cultural. And yes, because it's over time that mm. certain things are done from the time of our Rasul. And at the same time, you know, but like I said, it, it's with understanding and meaning. Yeah. There's a benefit to yourselves and to everyone else. There's, you know, there's meaning behind it. There's so much more in-depth reasoning, reasoning than just yeah. following a certain culture for no benefit. And especially, you know, if it's of, you know, good use and if it's like beneficial, if it makes, you know, doesn't help any, hurt anyone, then yeah, culture can be followed. But when it becomes harmful, mm -hmm. when it becomes where someone's been treated unfairly, then obviously it needs to be questioned. Mm -hmm. Now, wearing black or mourning or being respectful and, you know, having some sort of like remembrance because it's reflection, there's nothing wrong in that. Mm -hmm. Even if it does come under cultural sort of ways, which is fine. And even most cultures, if they do certain things, which is actually going to benefit you, you know, according to the rules and regulations of Islam, then there's nothing wrong in that. But when there's double standards, when, the, you know, there's mistreatment between, you know, gender, when there's like, you know, stoppage of, you know, marriage or potential life that's being lived in a, in a much more open way, which religion is, it allows but culture doesn't, mm. then obviously there's something to be questioned. Yeah, so we have to be careful to, to portray or to pass on the message to our children yes. when it comes to uh, the rituals of Muharram and Safar, yes. that they are just out of respect and it's not haram. Because, you know, I hear a lot of children saying, oh, it's, it's haram to wear any colors in Muharram and Safar, or it's uh, it's haram to chew chewing gum in, mm, in mm, Muharram mm. and Safar. So they don't understand that it's actually respect, it's a culture thing, yes. and it's not haram. You're not going to no. get punished for no. not wearing a yes. certain color. Yeah, I mean, it's also out of mm. respect that, you know, people won't get married during this month. Yeah, I mean, the nikah happens, can yeah. be performed as long as it's done in a respectful way, but most people would not even do that. So, mm. you know, that's just like, I would say it's like a lot of common sense, but obviously to children it has to be explained in a way that, you know, this is not the time for sort of celebration because it's, it's a like, sad time. yeah, it's a sad time. Yeah. So then you follow suit with regards to it, just like mm. if there was a funeral in your own home, yeah. you're not going to be doing certain things and mm. you're going to be, you know, keeping away from certain things. It's mm. the same sort of concept so it's yeah. not necessarily cultural it's just you know it's it's a way of being with certain things that happen and occur mm. so that's what yeah. it is what, what i find myself explaining to people when they ask me about 
why you, you don't do celebrations, even by Shia themselves. Mm -hmm. I just say, just imagine uh, one of your family members exactly. have passed away, a, a grandfather of yours. So we should act the same way, that as if our grandfather yes. or a, a family member has died. Yeah. How, how sad would you be and to what extent would you celebrate? To what extent, how would you dress mm -hmm. in those times? That's yeah, I mean, to exactly. That. It's an emotion that you're going mm. through. Mm. So, you know, and it's even if you don't have, have the emotion, it's the respect of, mm. of what's happened. So, yes, that's what, you know, you can actually come forward, like you just said. So, in order for us to actually, you know, live in a most healthy, balanced way, I think it's, it's nothing wrong in, you know, being proud of where you come from and, you know, dressing a certain way, obviously speaking the language, you have foods that are amazing from different cultures and backgrounds, and you know, the habits that we have. But like I said, we need to understand our religion more so those cultures do not take over and they do not, you know, sort of like contradict our religion. And I think our homes nowadays are just totally, you know, not all of it, but a lot of it because of the problems that are being faced is because people are confused. They confuse as to what is right, what is wrong, what we can do, what we cannot do. And as psychologists ask, you know, generally people, what is their identity and why is that their identities? Because they feel that this is the way we have to live and belong. So when you are in a home and you've got family, you've got generations around you, whether it's your, you know, your own children or not, you need to really know what does, you know, Islam do for me? How mm. am I living as a Muslim? What is my identity? How do I see myself? And when you have those questions, you've got to keep questioning. You know, as children, we question. We've got to learn from them as we get older and still keep questioning so that when we question ourselves, we can come up with the right answers and we can live in the right way because we need to take ourselves out of the sort of like realm that we're in sometimes and not just get bogged down with, you know, just living this ritual that we do without questioning it and follow the right way, which is the way that our Prophet and his family, peace be upon them, have taught us to be. And that's the guidance that we need in our homes. Mm. Thank you, Fahima. That was very, very insightful. And I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of people would uh, find that very uh, helpful because a lot of us are actually confused as to which is more important. I mean, we all know in our hearts that religion is more important, but sometimes we do end up following culture more mm -hmm. just to please our community or society yes. and in that can actually affect our religion because sometimes you do something and you're not sure if you're actually doing it for Allah or you're doing it for society yes. or doing it to please the people surrounding you so um, it's, it's a very important subject to be uh, to be addressed Absolutely, and we, yeah. we really appreciate it and we're coming towards our break and and inshallah after the break we'll be reading some of your questions that you have sent to Fahima um, back soon <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Making a House a Home, uh, where today we're discussing culture versus religion. Um, we're back with some questions from the viewers. Fahima, I've got a couple of questions for mm -hmm. you. From One from Layla. How can culture not be part of living when it has been the way for generations and especially when it carries part of our identity? Yeah, it is a very important part and no one's saying we should totally eradicate it. It's just to what extent that you're going to be living your culture and you gotta really know yourself what is more important what do you love you know do you love you know the generations that you've been brought up in you know islam exists today because things you know were eradicated from the time of you know the time of the prophet before that because things were just not done in the right way so we can't be blinded too we have to know that religion comes first and uh, that's our identity first and foremost that's who we are and that's what gives us the way in living so I know it's tough I know that there's many cultures out there that they follow a certain suit because it's important for them to do certain rituals but like I said if it if it contradicts your religion and if it's something that overlaps in a sense that it's actually causing more harm and damage then you do need to question that and it does you know obviously it will not benefit you in any way 
In fact, you're going to be doing harm to your home and to your family. And make yourself aware and be knowledgeable as to, you know, what exactly are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like I said before, you know, eating certain foods, speaking a language, dressing a certain way, but even that to a certain extent, does that conform with the ways of Islam? So, yes, it's part of us. And yes, we will always identify ourselves with where we come from. And we will continue with certain ways in which we live because of our culture. But when we take it to the extent where it's actually stopping us from, you know, integrating, if it's stopping us from being fair and just, if it's stopping us from being righteous in the way in which we should be, if we're going to call ourselves Muslims, then, you know, that's something that you really need to sort of look into a lot more deeper. Mm. And I have another question from Mustafa. <clears throat> In my background, I have seen that it is, it is more important to follow traditions that are cultural. So how can this be changed when it has been practiced for so many years, especially now when the new generation can see how much unnecessary conflict it can bring? I mean, you know, with my training and being in coaching and doing NLP, yes, we as humans generally find it very hard to break habits. But if there's an identification and an awareness of what we're doing, um, right or wrong, and we can actually, you know, be conscious of, you know, what changes we want to make, then we have to take that upon ourselves first before mm -hmm. we try and change society or families. So you as an individual need to be aware of what it is that you want for yourself. Take the steps to go through those changes. And a habit generally, um, it says between 60 to 90 days. But I think personally, you know, if you love something and you believe in something and you want it, it can happen instantly too. It mm. depends on what that change is. When anyone loves something, they'll make time for it and they will make changes for it. You love a football game, you drive miles and hours, sit in traffic, pay lots of money and go and watch that game. Mm. When it comes to wear a special outfit yes, sometimes. Yes, of course, you'll you take know. time and plan. When it comes to your own family members to take time or someone that you love or you committed to, you make excuses. So any habit can be changed and it starts with yourself. So if you want to change others, it's very difficult unless you can change yourself first. Mm -hmm. And there's a filter, you know, there's like, um, there's a domino effect, but it always starts from yourself. So yeah. you want to, you know, make a difference in the world and if you want to you know see the change do that for yourself and you know inshallah you know that only will bring out the differences in your family and if you feel that the the culture that you're following is not 100 percent correct or it's in contradiction with your religion then you be that change mm. and then the rest will follow as they say if you want to change the world you start by changing just yourself it, that's all it starts mm. with yes and that's all you need so you know we always like make judgments and opinions about other people and we see ourselves as higher for whatever reason it may be mm. but that's not the way to look at it because when you're making judgment it mainly defines you not the other person mm. so i think just constantly look in the mirror and if you know yourself well or you want to learn more you want more knowledge or you know you want to better yourself you want to do things for the world you want to do things for society your community your family it just you got to take that first step Mm. And it's not easy and you can, you know, it, it can actually cause even conflict within the family so that you have to be aware of it. Mm. So you've got to know your answers when you're going to be questioned as to why you're changing or why you're not doing certain things, if whatever the issues are that you feel is causing, you know, problems in the house, which you are following culture more than religion. Mm -hmm. So you stand up with those answers. You know that, you know, OK, you call yourself a Muslim. You are Muslim. This is what Islam says. So this is what I'm going to follow. Mm. So then you have to be ready and prepared for that. Don't just do it blindly as well. You have to be, you know, having the wisdom and be smart. Use the right language. Don't be forceful. Don't be arrogant about it. Don't have pride about it because you think that you've got an awakening. No, you be humble about it as well. well. Patronizing. Yeah. Patronizing. You know, it's all these things come into yeah. play. So mm. be very careful because, you know, these things have been practiced for generations. And for decades and for centuries mm -hmm. in some families and cultures. So it's not going to be that simple to break. But step by step, you know, one by one. And that's how you move. Okay. Um, a question from Amina. 
Can one not describe religion as culture? Yeah, we briefly touched on that before by saying that, you know, certain things in religion is looked upon as cultural. But like I said, it's because it has meaning to it. Whereas some cultures are, you know, are followed just blindly without meaning or it's a meaning which is actually of not beneficial, beneficial to yourself. Mm. So, you know, with religion and especially the religion of Islam, there are reasons for everything that, you know, we have to abide by. Mm -hmm. There is, you know, there are certain circumstances where we might not understand fully, but we are given a lot of answers and sort of, you know, reasons why we should do certain things and we should follow certain ways. So that's where I think it's more powerful, where you cannot put the two as the same, because in culture, it's just, um, just because we've always done it that way. Whereas religion, you do it this way, and this is the way of our prophet who we believe in our, and his family, peace be upon them. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's not a blind belief. It's not a belief that is, that is just so um, lacking sort of like understanding and reasoning. So I think you cannot really put the two as the same even though it can be looked upon that way because obviously our religion is for generations and you know mm. for periods of time it's so integrated within it's our culture it's been integrated it? but i don't see like i said anything wrong in that being integrated mm. as long as there's no contradiction mm. to the religion mm. and if it's bringing benefit if it's bringing communities together if it's exciting other people with regards to giving them knowledge of how different people live around the world and you know how they do things differently we can learn from different cultures mm. you know it's information it's knowledge as well. So don't disregard it thinking that it's completely something that we should not take mm. upon ourselves. So culture is beautiful. It's absolutely wonderful. And at the same time, it should be respected because a lot of the times we even use that as an excuse to mm. actually make fun of other people because they're not from your culture. Mm. So, you know, look at people as human beings, as a human race, as one with different colors, different backgrounds, different smells, different looks, different everything. But knowingly that Islam brings it all together, mm -hmm. no matter where you come from, no matter what you do, mm -hmm. that's what unites us. And even within our religion, we should be welcoming people from outside the religions. Mm -hmm. go, be, go beyond that. And even people that have no belief or things that are com completely contradictory to what we believe in. Open yourselves out there. Mm -hmm. Don't just judge because you have no understanding of why they've come to that conclusion. So... The question of religion and culture is extremely important and I think that we need to have much more in-depth understanding, in-depth knowledge and have a really, you know, useful way of, you know, bringing it to our homes so it's to benefit us and we can enjoy the both and we can actually celebrate both and mm -hmm. we can actually live in both. But, you know, just be careful how you sort of like use one or the other. And there is a balance mm. to a certain extent. So as a life coach, uh, would you say that a person uh, that, ha that, that questions can religion and culture be described as the same thing? Would you think that the person is a bit confused or? I don't think it's about confusion because it is, it is uh, something which, like I said, can be overlapped. I just think, you know, the more questions you ask and you choose how you want to live. Mm. If you identify yourself as a Muslim, that is first and foremost. And I think that's where we have problems because we identify ourselves as Iraqis. We identify ourselves as Hoja. We identify ourselves as Iranians or Pakistanis. Mm. That's when there's a problem. Identify yourself firstly as humans with brothers and sisters alike as you and deserve the same as you. Treatment, you know, quality and standards. And our religion brings that. And our religion is the umbrella for all of this. So you have to be very wise and knowledgeable that our religion is actually the, the movement that needs to be. So it's only because you look at it in a, as a backward way. It's only because you look at it as something restricting, as something that you cannot, you know, live life because it's, you know, we've got all these rules and all these things that you can and cannot do. Mm. But in every country and every, you know, where that you go, that's what rules and regulations are for. But our rules and regulations are actually a lot more advanced than even some of the Western society. Yes. So For I just sure. think it's not about being confused. It's about having the right knowledge, reading in between the lines, being clear, 
knowing yourself and your identity is really important. Mm -hmm. So identify with your identity, but prioritize what comes on top. And I think religion comes on top. Thank you so much, Fahima. Um, you've given us such an enlightening insight um, about this topic. And inshallah, all our viewers have benefited from our discussion. And we really appreciate your questions. And inshallah, we've been able to answer them the best way we can. Inshallah, we'll be back next week with more topics to discuss. Thank you. Ma'asalaamu. If you've been affected by the following topics raised in this episode, please contact your local GP or Fahima Muhammad on coachfm1 at hotmail.com. Thank mm -hmm. you.